Hello. On this rainy day in Pennsylvania, we are going to discuss standard half cell potentials. Particularly, we are going to derive a relationship to determine the standard reduction potential when we add together two distinct half cell reactions. For our first half cell reaction, let's suppose that we have a species A which gains a certain number of electrons. Let's say in this case it gains n sub 1 electrons. Since A was neutral and now is reduced with a certain number of electrons, it is now going to form an anion with an n sub 1 minus charge. Let's also say that the standard reduction potential for this particular half cell reaction is going to be E naught sub 1 where the one here and the one there refer to the fact that we're talking about the first half cell reaction. Now let us suppose in the second half cell reaction that the product of the first reaction A with a minus N sub 1 charge gains additional electrons and let's say in this step it gains n sub 2 electrons. Since it previously had a minus n sub 1 charge, the charge on the species now is going to be n sub 1 plus n sub 2 minus. Let's say that the standard reduction potential for this specific step number 2 is going to be e naught sub 2. The two refers to the fact that this is the standard reduction potential for step number two. We remember that we can add equations together, these reactions, and the net reaction of adding step number one and step number two, keeping in mind that since we have a to the n sub one minus as both a reactant and a product, we can effectively cancel from each side. We have to add together the number of electrons so we realize that our sum is the species A plus n sub 1 plus n sub 2 electrons gives us A to the n sub 1 plus n sub 2 minus charge anion. So then the interesting question that we want to solve in this particular case is what is going to be the standard uh, reduction potential for this case. The case where we add the two reactions number one and number two together. The naive, and it will turn out incorrect answer, is to simply add together uh, E naught sub one and E naught sub two to get E naught total. We could do that if we were adding together enthalpies, we were adding together entropies, or we were adding together Gibbs free energies. But for the standard reduction potentials, that will not work. So we will now see what expression we need to use to find the standard reduction potential for the total reaction. A very useful relationship between the standard reduction potential and the Gibbs free energy for a half cell reaction is that delta G naught, so it's the standard Gibbs free energy, is equal to the minus the number of electrons transferred, the Faraday constant, times the standard reduction potential. So in the specific case of the first reaction, delta G naught sub 1 is equal to minus n sub 1 f e naught sub 1. Similarly, we can apply the exact same relationship for the second reaction. So here we have delta G naught, the standard Gibbs free energy, for the case of the second reaction, is equal to the number of electrons transferred, which is n sub 2, the minus sign in the front, which is very important. We have f, which is the Faraday constant, and then times the standard reduction potential for the second step. So now we have converted the 
uh, standard reduction potentials to the standard Gibbs free energies. And the reason why we want to do that is the standard Gibbs free energies are additive in the way that we want. So we see that the delta G naught for the total reaction is very directly just the delta G naught sub 1 for the first reaction plus delta G naught for the second reaction. Next, we substitute the expressions we've given in this line into the line below it so that we get the delta G naught total is equal to minus n sub 1 times F times E naught sub 1 plus minus n sub 2 times F times E naught sub 0. E sub 0 sub 2. Sorry. So all we've done is to substitute the expressions from this line directly for the corresponding expressions in this equation. Next, we can factor out a minus f from each of these terms. So we get minus f times the quantity n sub 1 times e naught sub 1 plus n sub 2 times e naught sub 2. So this gives us an expression for the total um, standard Gibbs energy for the bottom reaction. But we still haven't entirely determined what we wanted, which was to find the standard reduction potential, the half cell potential of this step, not the Gibbs free energy. So we need to do one more major step. The standard reduction potential of the total reaction is related to the standard Gibbs energy of the total reaction in the same way that the standard reduction potentials of each of the first two steps are related to the corresponding Gibbs free energy. What does that mean? Well, it means that we can write delta G naught subtotal as minus n times the total number of electrons transferred times the Faraday constant times the e, e, uh, e naught subtotal, the standard reduction potential for that step. How does that help us? Well, now we can immediately insert this expression into the same equation that we've used here, so we can equate that minus f times this quantity is equal to minus, in fact, we'll even rewrite it slightly here just to show more clearly, minus f, so we're just going to rewrite this changing the order of the factors, which we're allowed to do, because they commute, and total times e naught, I can cancel the minus f from each side here, and that gives me the relationship that n sub 1 times e naught sub 1 plus n sub 2 times e naught sub 2. is equal to n total e naught total. So we've gone from this line to that line simply by canceling minus f from each side. One last point to emphasize in the total reaction, 
What is the total number of electrons that is transferred? Other than simply the sum n1 plus n2. So in place of n subtotal, let's put in the quantity n sub 1 plus n sub 2. And we are one step away from coming up with a closed expression for the total uh, standard reduction potential for the sum of the two reactions. To get E naught subtotal alone on the right hand side, we simply need to divide each side of the equation by the sum n1 plus n2. If we do that, we get on the right hand side E naught total, which is the quantity that we're interested in. And on the left hand side, we get n sub 1, E naught sub 1, plus n sub 2, E naught sub 2, and this is all divided by the total number of electrons transferred, which is n1 plus n2. So there we have derived a valid mathematically legitimate expression for the standard reduction potential when we know the standard reduction potential of the two steps that add it together give the final reaction. So we don't can't simply add together E naught sub 1, E naught sub 2 because we have different numbers of electrons in many cases. So um, we have N1. Now notice that if the number of electrons N1 and N2 is the same, so if N1 is equal to N2, then we could factor out N sub 1, N sub 1 from each side here, and divide it by N sub 1. And then we would actually would have the case where that the standard reduction potential uh, for the sum of the reaction was simply the sum of the two standard reduction potentials. So we, that would only be true if the number of electrons transferred in each case was exactly the same. Since we can't necessarily know that to be true uh, ahead of time, we have this general expression for the transfer of any number of electrons, and we were able to legitimately derive the standard reduction potential for the total reaction. I thank you very much for your attention. As always, have a good one.